Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm talking about, oh, thank you. Clicker. That. Thanks. Uh, Mono Volumes, which is a project coming out of UCL, and we're here to uh, understand the startup opportunities. Uh, the team uh, consists of myself and two amazing former postdocs of mine. Uh, we've worked together and separately on uh, research projects that have been built, published, and deployed uh, in the computer vision area. We've done about uh, three dozen of them that I, I would consider significant. And now we're really excited to be working on the problem of 3D layout uh, from a single image. And so this problem comes up in a number of different sectors. I happen to like uh, assisted driving, so I'll, I'll illustrate it that way. So imagine you're driving and you want to change lanes. Maybe you're driving a new Tesla, so you have eight cameras and some radars, and we'll even bolt a laser scanner on top. And so all those sensors will tell you eventually that, OK, there's some stuff on the road, and now is probably a bad time to change lanes. That gap is not big enough for your car. Uh, and, and here's the crux of the problem. Uh, if you are just using the sensor data to decide what to do, you're not sure now whether you should try to overtake uh, and so move ahead of this vehicle that you don't know how big it is, or whether you should hang back and pull in behind everybody to, to, to change lanes. Now, it would be great if you could make your decisions based on the parts of the scene that you can't see. Uh, and, and this is really the aim of our project, is to use the part, fragments of the scene that you have observed to estimate what the rest of the scene looks like. And it's not just for the automotive sector. So uh, I'll explain the two pieces that we have working already uh, on a kind of simpler indoor controlled environment. Uh, it's easy to get a single image like this. You got the colors, so you have the appearance of what objects look like. But you don't have the shape and the size. For shape and size, you might go to your go-to um, depth sensors, so laser scanners or something else, and, and then you'll get data like this. The alternative way to do that is our mono depth system, which takes a color image and produces a depth map. And I'll talk more about that in just a second. But first, uh, I wanted to just uh, harp on the depth images. They usually look good uh, in general from whatever sensor you use from the original camera angle. But if you, uh, if you try to view them from a different angle, you'll see these these gaps, these holes, because the surfaces you did capture are blocking your view, so you can't see behind them. And so we've addressed that with a previous CVPR paper uh, of volume completion, where we don't use the color information at all. We just use a single depth image. So here in the upper right, that's our input, that, that sort of single view depth image. And the bottom right is our output. So we get the whole 3D, uh, an estimate of what the whole scene layout looks like. Uh, this is supervised, and interestingly, right, there's no uh, overlap between the test objects and the training objects, which is an important point. It says you don't have to recognize your objects in order to uh, have an estimate of what the backside looks like. Now, back to mono, mono depth. We take every single input image up from the top, and we convert it into a depth map uh, like you see in the bottom. This will be presented at CVPR later this summer. Um, it's... Uh, qualitatively, I think, good results. Quantitatively, we beat all of the competition on all of the benchmarks that are in use right now, and um, that's been true for the past, uh, for the past year. Um, so we've got the numbers to, to, to back this up. Uh, now, if we look at the two pieces uh, of technology we have, we, we know that we can bring them together, and we're looking here, looking for opportunities how to apply that technology. Some of the things we've looked at so far include uh, browsing of your image collections, trying to interpolate. Um, you know, you've got these disocclusions happening all the time and how to cope with those. Another, another option is to look at our uh, making your home videos into uh, 3D sort of stereo visualizations. And we've got some progress on that, so we take a single image like this and we can convert it into these sort of left-right combinations. But we're on the lookout. Uh, for more ideas, uh, and that's why we're here. So to, to, to sort of wrap up, I want to say that occlusion is kind of the enemy, uh, and with some hard work and some careful data capture, uh, we, we now know that we, can, that we can sort of think our way around occlusions. So thank you. Okay, great. So we're going to set up for two minutes of questions. Just to reiterate, um, uh, especially for the VCs that are among this great group of judges, these are not being judged as startup a competition, more as brilliant computer vision teams um, working on a unique idea, 
uh, unique tech that could potentially become a startup or a part of another startup or recruited or something. So it's a little bit different. Uh, fire away questions. Who has questions? Great. Can I bring some mics over here? All right, Tally. Hi. Um, so my question is, what is the range of scenes that mono volume and mono depth is applicable for? The, the, the event diagram doesn't quite overlap very well yet, so that's what we're working on. So the mono depth works on uh, street scenes because we've trained it on data that we were able to obtain of street scenes. You just need to have stereo pairs. The, mono, the, the volume completion works currently on scenes where we can capture objects by walking around them and scanning them from all sides with some kind of depth sensor. What will be one killer app? Uh, besides assisted driving? Uh, yes. OK. Uh, so other options might be like uh, robot grasping, right? A robot could eventually estimate the shape of a scene and figure out how to get to something. But it would have to walk around the scene first, and so then it doesn't know where to go. So, so figuring out where to grasp or how to navigate a scene would be, would be one thing if you were going for robots. Great era. And when your judges, when you ask a question, just quickly say your name so everybody else in the back, they, they can't see your face who's speaking. My name is Ira. Uh, a question. So you, you've mentioned that the completion is different, is separate part for now. How how long how how hard do you think is to combine the two? Uh, like asking, you have a like, single photo yeah. and you want to complete the shape from a single photo. Uh, so to combine the two technologies, yeah. how long will it, how much development will yeah. will we need? How? Um, I think we are within twelve months to be conservative. Uh, I could we could we could do that. Clement, in the back. Can we pass these mics down so they're not just Thank on you, the floor? Thank you, Clement. Yeah. Um, Hi. Can you just hold that? How far are you fr from running this in real time in a car? Uh, so the mono depth runs at 20 frames a second. Um, and the volume completion is slower. But as I said, it's, it's still kind of the, the, the previous generation of it. So it's for indoor scenes where we scan things. Um, and so there's. There's new developments happening there, but I'm not ready to talk about those yet. OK, one last quick question. Great. Can you predict anything be besides occupancy, like the likelihood that the car or pedestrian is male? No, we don't have any semantic training, and so we don't have any predictions on that either.